हेलो व्यूअर्स यू आर वाचिंग मोजो फॉर इंडस्ट्री इंडिया फर्स्ट मोबाइल जर्नलिज्म प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर इंडस्ट्री इंडिया हैज द फोर्थ लार्जेस्ट विंड पावर इंस्टॉल कैपेसिटी इन द वर्ल्ड एंड द कंट्रीज टोटल एस्टिमेटेड विंड पावर पोटेंशियल इज 695 गीगावाट ए टारगेट ऑफ 60 गीगावाट वाज सेट टू बी अचीव्ड फ्रॉम विंड एनर्जी बाय 2022 एज ऑफ 28 फरवरी दिस ईयर द टोटल इंस्टॉल्ड विंड पावर कैपेसिटी वाज 38.789 गीगावाट and more than 8 gigawatt was under implementation making it a total of around 47 gigawatt today in this episode of the big interview we have mr ajay devraj secretary general of indian wind power association with us to give an overview of the wind energy sector and to discuss on what the future holds for the industry so mr devraj welcome to our show what's your comment on the recent performance of the wind power sector in india you are right the target is uh, 60 gigawatts of wind energy installed by the end of uh, december 2022 as against that like the figure as of 14 2021 is about 39.25 gigawatts like if i go by the official record under construction as of february 2020 we had 7.3 gigawatts between february 2020 and today a further uh, 2.17 megawatts has been auctioned if i total all these things together what we have is 48.743 gigawatts so that leaves a shortfall of about uh, 11 gigawatts like is this going to happen not happen a bit of a, a dicey situation no doubt but then the thing is if one looks at what has been the highest annual capacity addition in india it has been 5.5 gigawatts in a year that was achieved in the year 2016-17 funnily enough just before the reverse auction that we set in now if one looks at the capacity added during 2020-21 it was a meager 1.5 approximately gigawatts but the average over the last 5 years has been about 2.4 now perhaps we may not actually reach 60 but my estimate is that possibly 54 55 that should be something that is achievable right in the current scenario what are the major roadblocks for wind sector one i would say is a mismatch between the policies of the center and the states for example seki auctions have various assumptions made but the states have their own views as to what those assumptions mean almost about 10 to 14 months projects that seki had auctioned out in gujarat were in limbo because it was unclear where the land was going to be allocated it was believed that the land would be given by the state government from the revenue land it did not happen subsequently after months of uh, dilly dallying and going back and forth they said that the entire thing would be located in the uh, hybrid park identified by the government one question that wind energy generators have raised with regard to that is that look where is the transmission infrastructure you're saying it's going to be there but then we know that to set up transmission infrastructure takes time so that is one the second thing is that they say that much of it is swampy kind of land so in a swamp like obviously there are challenges in putting up even a foundation let alone putting up the tower to set up the windmill third they are questioning whether actually there is any uh, shall i say wind resource assessment done for that particular area so i mean these are questions that have been asked 
they have no answers forthcoming so yes there are kind of issues but at the same time uh, does this mean that uh, it is the end of the road for wind the answer is no like as recent as uh, march 2021 we had seki tranche 10 which was pure wind uh, that was for 1200 uh, megawatts you would find it was if you over subscribe uh, what is interesting is that from a previous high of 2 rupees 99 paisa the bid went for 2 rupees 77 paisa so uh, the thing is that that fighting spirit of investors that's definitely there right okay mr devraj over the years uh, solar power has emerged as a major driver of new capacity addition in the renewable energy space why wind power sector is losing the energy transition race any particular reason you would like to highlight okay let's look at this 175 gigawatts to be achieved by december 2022 out of that 175 gigawatts 100 gigawatts is supposed to come from solar 60 from wind the current installed capacity of both solar as well as wind is around 39 gigawatts each like in fact uh, solar was uh, lagging behind wind uh, till about january of 2021 it was only in february of 2021 that it has reached more or less parity so really speaking solar has a lot more catching up to do than wind that is one the second thing is if you look at wind have high wind seasons which last about Uh, five months, so we are talking for 150 days. But if you look at solar, you have about 300 days of uh, solar, uh, uh, good enough to generate in uh, where the thing of uh, energy. Yet another thing is that wind energy is site specific. That is, there are windy states. You go to Tamil Nadu, you go to Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Maharashtra, Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh. Solar doesn't have these kind of hazards. It can be put up anywhere. So therefore, uh, like it is uh, not as if uh, uh, the wind is lagging behind or solar has uh, taken over, etc. It has been planned for solar to take over. So I I don't see any uh, particular problem or cause for not for the wind energy industry. Government has taken several steps to improve the health of distribution companies. However, there are mounting dues for wind power generators. Could you let us know the reasons? We are thankful to the government for the steps that it has taken to ease the payments situation to wind energy generators. Having said that, when loans have been given to PFC, REC, to discoms, but we have received only part payment, not the full payment. In the case of our generators in Andhra Pradesh, as against the power purchase agreement price of four rupees forty-eight paisa, because of a unilateral decision taken by the government. that was reduced to 2 rupees 43 paisa so even that payment uh, through pfc rec in respect of andhra pradesh has been part payment at 2 rupees 43 paisa not at the contracted rate quite frankly i don't think it is going to make too much of a difference because unless and until discoms get their act together and reduce their technical and commercial losses reduce the thing of uh, pilferage of power that is taking place and uh, like deal with these kind of issues make uh, the assets more uh, productive we are going to have this kind of a problem on a regular basis even from a financial prudence uh, perspective generally when you take debt you invest it in 
revenue generating capex what the government has done by saying okay use it to pay your bills is to divert that to operating expenditure okay, so the thing is that while the debt is mounting you're not actually getting any extra return so to speak or the discounts are not generating an extra return on this entire thing so this is going to be a cycle like i mean the thing is that every now and then something new comes up but unless and until there is a uh, attempt to look at things holistically i don't think this is going to get resolved will privatization of discoms help now let's take the case of uh, tata power uh, they have been i think providing power as a private uh, body to mumbai and maharashtra various other parts of maharashtra for years okay. like uh, having been a person who lived in mumbai as well as in other parts of the country i could very clearly state that the quality of power that one has access to in mumbai is far superior to the quality of power that you have access to anywhere else in the country okay the other thing is that uh, you have uh, reliance which took over this bscs now i was a part of reliance at one point in time the plf of uh, their plant on the maharashtra gujarat border uh went up rapidly yeah. like in fact it reached uh, the stage where it was the highest in the country so uh, that is okay thermal but uh, the thing of wind solar other renewables they are also a part of the mix of all these uh, corporate players uh, who are in the private space but then uh, uh, playing the role of a discount like you will find that the quality of what they are doing is much much superior i understand tatas have recently offered green energy at a premium of about 50 or 60 paisa more to the consumers in mumbai so i mean it definitely is something that i think is worth looking at and uh, definitely the way to go forward apart from this thing of just privatizing uh, discounts in uh, like opening up distribution to private investors would also be something that i think the government should be looking at okay mr devraj before before uh, concluding today's uh, interaction uh, mr devraj i'd like to understand from you what and how long will it take for a revival of the wind power sector like we do have some suggested solutions which we have been talking about to the government uh, to the ministry of new and renewable energy the ministry of power the crc etc okay one is perhaps we need a single window and accelerated clearances for existing and future projects second like there are projects which are stuck at the moment when you auction them etc then needs to be a focused attention on how to debottleneck them a third thing is that contracts need to be honored in letter and in spirit saki auctions are there for the 50 megawatt and above category the sub 50 megawatt category needs to be looked at in fact the sub 50 megawatt category is what actually uh, propagated the entire growth of the industry the other thing is to de bottleneck the open access sale like you find all kinds of hindrances being put by discoms uh, as far as open access is concerned uh, so that is one thing i think that needs to be sorted out uh, the commercial and industrial establishments should have a choice as to where they want to buy their power from thank you mr devraj for being on our show today and apprising our viewers about the recent performance of wind power sector in india and what the future holds for the industry
With that, it's wrap on today's interaction with Mr. Ajay Devraj, Secretary General of Indian Wind Power Association. Viewers, thanks for watching Mojo for Industry, India's first mobile journalism platform for industry. Please stay tuned for more such interactions and don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel and press the bell icon. Goodbye.